My name is Dr. Timothy Juono. I'm a fifth year urology resident at the University of South Florida in Tampa, Florida, USA. Uh, the training has been great. I'm actually about to complete my training in about one month. And so uh, the total amount of penile prosthesis that I've done with him is well over 100. Uh, we're one of the largest centers in the Eastern United States, which is good. Um, but it is good to see other ways of doing it um, and other uh, tips and tricks from other providers such as Dr. Park. I'm joining a private practice group in Central Valley, California. Uh, it's a private practice group in the area that does uh, every type of urology. Um, specifically for me, I have been hired to do a lot of the andrology and penile implant surgery as well, so it's going to be exciting to uh, start that. <laughs> well, Korea is a great, uh, you know, country. Seoul is, a, is an awesome city. I, I, like I said, I have been here before, so I was able to do all the touristy stuff last time. I think at the end of your training, especially for me, it's good to see um, how, you know, take every opportunity to see how uh, other people practice in different countries and different parts of the United States. I actually shadowed uh, Dr. Paul Perito in Miami. Um, we did a course in ta Nashville, Tennessee with Boston Scientific, and so uh, my colleagues and I that are about to finish, we're taking every opportunity we can to observe uh, other ways people do it. Um, you know, we've done Dr. Carrion's way over and over again, um, but it's good to see how other people do it to be able to better, better ourselves. Plus, you know, I wanted to see what a Korean clinic is like after watching so many Korean dramas. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, you know, from Dr. Carrion and Dr. Parker, they work closely with Dr. Park from the SMSNA, which is the Society for, um, you know, Andrology and, uh, in the United States. And he actually came to Miami, Florida a couple months ago uh, to proctor at the SMSNA. Um, I unfortunately wasn't there, but my really close colleague was and, and told me really great things. And so I was able to reach out to him through Dr. Carrion. He was more than willing to, to have me come here today. So very appreciated. Um, I think he has a great setup, uh, you know, from just being briefly here, having uh, the same team, having the operating room, and, and the way his process is. It seems very streamlined, very meticulously planned out, which I think is a great benefit. And I, I hope to be in that setting one day, having, you know, the same team that knows exactly what we're doing, um, having the, the, a good setup that, that'll make the process smoother um, and better outcomes for the patients. A lot of old school providers uh, around the country in the United States, they have that set up, which is something that you always want to strive for. So I think he's got a great thing going here. Uh, Subcoronal approach, the way he does it is very, I think he has a very streamlined process. Uh, in medicine, especially in surgery, uh, you want to do what you're good at, uh, but you always still want to be able to get yourself out of a, a situation because not all surgeries are the same, not every patient is the same. I think being able to do the subcoronal, penoscrotal, infrapubic, all the things he was mentioning in the OR as well, it's good to have in your back pocket. Um, I think this approach for his patient population is good. Um, he was telling me about the post-operative pain, the post-operative early pump manipulation. All of those things are discussed in the penile prosthesis world. And I think he's thought about them and, and has a good way of doing it that works for him. In 10 years, I think it's going to depend on how the um, U.S. healthcare market evolves. Obviously, there are a lot of uh, people in the penile prosthesis circle that, uh, you know, Dr. Park knows and, um, you know, that Dr. Carrion knows that they've been able to mold their practice to solely doing uh, andrology or, or penile prosthesis surgery. I think that if you're able to get that patient population and it's something that you love to do and it makes your patients happy, that's definitely somewhere where um, I'd like to be. Um, I do like other parts of urology as well though, so I may not be willing to give that up, but I'm not starting practice for another month, so we'll see. <laughs> Ask me again in five years. <laughs>